In the last video of my Getting Started on YouTube series, I told you about six things that you have to do before creating a YouTube channel. Now that you've done those things, it's time to create your YouTube channel. So in this video, I'm going to walk you step by step through the entire process of creating your channel. I'll show you how to enable features on your channel that aren't turned on by default, but should be. I'll also show you how to set up certain functions that will make the day-to-day -day operation of your channel a whole lot easier. From improving your search results to laying out your YouTube homepage in a professional manner, I'll go through it all. Hey guys, Craig here. Hope everybody's doing well. Okay, so when I first started creating this video, I had originally planned on covering everything that's involved with the initial setup of a YouTube channel. But as I got further and further into writing the script, I realized that this video was going to run way too long. So I decided to break it up into two videos. So in this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to do to create your channel. And then in my next video, I'll go over how to create channel art like banners, avatars, and thumbnails. Breaking these two videos up will allow me to dive a little bit deeper into how to visually brand your channel. So for now, I'm just going to focus on getting the fundamentals of your channel set up. So if you're ready, let's get to it. Okay, so before we can create a YouTube channel, we first have to sign into our YouTube account. And to do that, we actually need to have a YouTube account. So for those of you who are watching this video and have yet to create a YouTube account, you're going to need to do that first. And to create a YouTube account, you first need to create a Google account. So start by clicking on the little sign in button in the top right hand corner. Then you'll be taken over to Google's account creation page. Again, for those of you who already have a YouTube account, just ignore this part. Okay, so to create a Google account, you have to click on the little create account link. Now when you click on that link, you'll notice that you have three options. For myself, which is a personal account, for my child, and then to manage my business. The only two accounts that you need to concern yourself with is either the for myself or the to manage my business options. So here's the difference. When you have a YouTube channel that's linked to your personal Google account, you are the owner of that channel and the only one who has access to it. So if you want to have somebody working with you on your channel, like an assistant, then you're going to have to give them access to your Google account login information, which I don't recommend that you do. And this is why the second option to manage my business would be a much better option in that situation. Because with a brand account, you can give multiple people access to your YouTube channel without giving them access to your personal Google account. When you invite somebody to work on your channel, they can actually access your YouTube studio from their own personal Google account. Okay, so choose the type of account that you want and then fill out all of the required information on the next few pages. When it comes to the email address that you use to create your Google account, you can either choose to use an already existing email address or you can create a brand new Gmail account. It's entirely up to you. A little piece of advice though, Whatever email address you use to create your Google account, never give that address out to the public. For instance, on your YouTube channel page, there's a spot where people can find your email address to contact you for business inquiries. Do not use this email address to create your Google account. In fact, don't even use this email as a potential way for Google to contact you. When creating your Google account, use a completely different email address. That's why it's not a bad idea to create a brand new Gmail account that you don't use for anything else, just for this purpose. Whatever email address you do use to create your Google account is going to be your username login, and you really don't want people knowing that. Okay, so once you have your Google account created, head back over to YouTube. You should already be logged in. Now, if you haven't already created a YouTube channel, when you click on your profile icon in the top right hand corner, you're going to want to choose the create a channel option from the drop down menu. Now for those of you who already have a YouTube channel but want to create a new one, then what we just went through is going to be a little different for you. So that create a channel option won't be available for you in the drop down list under your profile icon. What you're going to want to do instead is choose the settings tab. Under the account tab in the settings menu, you're going to want to choose add or manage your channels. After clicking on that, you'll be taken to a page that has all of your current channels on it. From here, you just want to click the create a channel button. So regardless of whether you're clicking on this button to create your first YouTube channel, or you're clicking on this button to create a second, third, or fourth YouTube channel, you're going to eventually end up on a page that looks like this. Now, if you're creating your first YouTube channel, you may be sent to this page and then this page before you get sent to the channel naming page. 
On this page here, just choose the type of channel that you want to create. But regardless of which way you take, you will eventually end up at this page here. Now before you pick a channel name, really think about the type of content that you're going to be posting and make sure that your channel name is a good representation of that content. No matter what you name your channel, never lose sight of the fact that your YouTube channel is a business and your channel name is a part of your brand. So whatever name you choose is how people are going to refer to you in the future. Let me give you a few examples. So for my YouTube business, I'm the face of my brand. So using my legal name as my channel name makes perfect sense, but you don't have to. Take the YouTube artist Jazza for instance. Although he is the face of his brand, Jazza is not his real name. His real name is Josiah Brooks. Jazza was just a username that he chose when he started publishing his artwork online. But I guarantee you that everyone who meets him in person today refers to him as Jazza. So if you're going to use a made up name as your channel name, then make sure that you like it and make sure that you'll still like it 20 years from now because it's going to stick with you. Now that being said, just because you use your legal name as your channel name doesn't necessarily mean that you yourself have to be the face of your business. An example of this is the artist Chris Hong. She uses her legal name for her channel name and I've never seen her face in any of her videos. So you can still have a little bit of anonymity even though you're using your real name. Now your last option is to go full on anonymous. An example of this is the artist Pick Candle. She never shows her face in any of her videos and she uses a made up name as her brand name. And you could even go as far as to publish books under that fictitious brand name if you wanted to. But that being said, if you do decide to use your real name as your author name in the future whenever you publish, if you want to try and pull customers from your YouTube channel, you're going to have to put both your real name and your brand name on all of your books, just so people can make the connection, which is exactly what Pick Kendall does on all of her books. She uses her real name as the author, but makes sure to let people know that she's the creator of Pick Candle. So what I'm basically getting at here is before you pick a channel name, sit down and really think about where you want this YouTube business to go. If you haven't seen it yet, I strongly recommend that you watch my video, Six Things You Must Do Before Starting a YouTube Channel. That video will help you establish some direction for your channel before you even create it. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. So for this example, I figured that I'd create a channel that's not an art channel because I know many of my viewers are not artists. So I'm just going to create an ambient music channel and I'm going to call it Unwind Ambient Music. Okay, so once you've chosen a channel name, click the Create button. Now there are still a few more settings that I want to go over. So go up to your profile icon and from the drop down menu, choose Settings. On the Settings page, click on Channel Status and Features. In this menu, you're going to find all of the features that are enabled by default, as well as a few very important features that won't be enabled until you verify your phone number. So to verify your phone number, all you have to do is click on the big blue verify phone number button. This is going to take you to the account verification page. Now the first thing you're going to have to do on this page is decide whether or not you want YouTube to send you the verification code by text or by voice message. Next, you'll have the option to select your country. And finally, you'll have to enter in your phone number and then just click the Get Code button. You should receive the code in just a few minutes. Then just enter the six digit verification code into this text box and hit the Submit button. Your phone number has now been verified. And if you go back to the Features page, you'll notice that all of those additional features have now been enabled. Okay, so close down this menu and go back to your channel dashboard. From the left hand menu, choose the Customization tab. Now in the customization menu, you'll find three additional menu tabs, layout, branding, and basic info. I'm going to start with basic info. The first thing you can do in this menu is change your channel name. So if you ever want to rename your YouTube channel, you can always do that here. The next box down is where you enter in your bio for your about page. So many new YouTubers leave this section empty and that's a big mistake. And one of the main reasons why that is, is because when you first launch your channel, you aren't going to have very much content in your video library. So people are going to have a very difficult time trying to figure out what your channel is all about. Until you have at least 10 or more videos in your library, your vision for your channel won't be all that obvious. And as a result, you're really not giving your viewers a reason to subscribe. At least if you have a clear definition on your about page of what viewers can expect from your channel over the coming years, then they'll be able to make an informed decision as to whether your content is something that they would be interested in subscribing to. Your about page is also a great place to throw in a few keywords to help the YouTube algorithm determine who to show your content to. 
but don't make your bio just a list of random keywords. Write it out in a way so that it's consumable for humans, as well as computers. So if you look at my bio, I start off by telling my story as to how I developed my doodling skills. And that story leads into why I created my channel and what it's all about. But as I read it, you can see that it does contain quite a few keywords for the algorithm. If you're anything like me, then you've probably spent a large portion of your grade school, high school, and college years doodling aimlessly in your notebooks. In fact, for the amount of hours I've spent doodling throughout my educational years, I should have a master's degree in doodling by now. And that got me thinking. If I've been able to make a living over the past 40 years from all of my hours of schooling, then why shouldn't I be able to make a living from all of my hours of doodling? And that's what this channel is all about. I'll be taking a part-time hobby that I've had since grade school and turning it into a full-time income. My videos will chronicle everything that I'm doing to make a living as a professional doodlist. So if you're somebody who doodles and you're interested in seeing if I can pull it off, then hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride. From tutorial videos to vlogs, my channel will be educational as well as inspirational. As you can see, even though there are a lot of keywords in there that pertain to my content, it still flows like a cohesive story. So write your bio for humans, but make it useful for the algorithm. For this ambient music channel, I'll just put something like, whether you're studying, meditating, or just relaxing, Unwind Ambient Music has everything you need to get yourself focused and composed. You'll find everything from ambient, cinematic, classical, as well as atmospheric music on this channel. And each three hour video features stunningly beautiful scenes from nature that gently flow from one to the next in a way that will further lighten your mood. If you're looking to unwind, then you've come to the right place. So hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification so that you don't miss a single one of our weekly video uploads. Something along those lines. Now below that, you'll see your channel URL. Once your channel has 100 subscribers, you'll be able to choose a custom URL instead of all these random letters and numbers. And this is something to keep in mind when choosing your channel name. Make sure that your channel name is unique. Because if there are other channels with the same name as yours, chances are someone else will have already claimed that custom URL. Which means if you want your custom URL to match your channel name, then you're going to end up having to change your channel name down the road. So try to choose a name that no one else is using on YouTube. And it's fairly easy to see if anyone is. Just copy the generic YouTube URL, followed by a forward slash, the letter C, and then another forward slash, followed by your desired channel name. And then copy that whole address and paste it into the URL bar of your browser, and then hit enter. If a channel comes up, your custom URL is already taken. But if it doesn't, then it's not. But again, just keep in mind that choosing a custom URL isn't something that you'll have access to until you reach at least 100 subscribers. Okay, so the next thing you can do on this page is add in all of your external website and social media links. There's only room for five icons on your channel banner, and only the first link will have text next to it. So if you have a website, blog, or an online store that you're trying to drive traffic to, put that as your first link. And just know that not all favicons will show up properly on your banner. Some lesser known sites will just show up as default web favicons. And on that note, just know that if you recently opened up a store on Gumroad or some other platform like that and you just uploaded your custom favicon to your Gumroad storefront, YouTube may post that link with a default web favicon instead of your custom favicon. But don't worry about it. About every month or so, YouTube clears their cache on stuff like this, and your custom favicon will more than likely show up on your channel banner at that time. Okay, so the final thing you're going to want to do is add in an email address where people can contact you. And the reason you want to do this is because this is how companies will contact you when they're interested in purchasing a sponsored ad spot in one of your videos. Now just to be clear, I'm not talking about the Google AdSense ads that YouTube places at the beginning, middle, and end of your videos. I'm referring to the sponsored ads. This is when the company contacts you directly to create like a 30 second promotional spot directly in your video in exchange for a sum of money. And these sponsored ads can pay you anywhere from $100 to $1,000 or more per spot depending on the size of your channel. So it's a great way to earn additional income for your YouTube channel. So putting a contact email here is extremely important. And remember what I said earlier, don't use the same email address you did to create your Google account. Keep those emails separate. Okay, so that's everything for the basic info page. So let's head over to the layout tab. 
Now, most of the things in here, you won't be able to set up until you actually have some videos uploaded, but I just wanna bring them to your attention now. And the most important one is the trailer video. The reason most people subscribe to a YouTube channel is because the channel has so much content on it that they wanna watch and that they can't possibly watch all in one sitting. So they subscribe to a channel so that they don't forget where it is. Now, when you're first starting out, you're not going to have a lot of content on your channel, so there's really no reason for anyone to subscribe to it, unless you have a trailer video that lets them know what they can expect to see on your channel in the future. If they can see your vision for your channel, they may subscribe to you, even though you only have two videos in your video library. That's probably one of the biggest mistakes that new YouTubers make, not uploading a trailer video. To upload one, all you have to do is upload a video, just like you would any other video, and then come back to this page, and from your uploaded videos, choose which video you want to be your trailer. It's pretty simple. Now I touch on creating a trailer video in my video, Six Things You Must Do Before Starting a YouTube Channel. So again, I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. Now the trailer video will only be seen by unsubscribed visitors to your channel. So once somebody has subscribed to your channel, that trailer video will no longer appear at the top of your page. So what you can do is you can set up a featured video in its place, just for returning subscribers. This video you can change at any time. I suggest using in this spot whatever video is currently most popular on your channel. Okay, so this next section is your featured section. This is where your playlists will be created. I recommend that you always keep the uploads playlist because it's the one playlist that will always show all of your videos chronologically from newest to oldest. So keep that playlist on top so viewers can easily find your latest video. But as you create more content, you should be creating videos for specific niches and each one of those niches should have their own playlist on your channel. Again, I go over all of this stuff in my video, six things you must do before starting a YouTube channel. So be sure and watch that video next. Now, as your video library grows, your primary goal will not be to get people to watch your most popular video. It's gonna to be to get people to a playlist that contains multiple videos on the topic that they're searching for. Sending viewers to your most popular video might get you 15 minutes of watch time, but sending them to a playlist with 20 videos on it may get you 15 hours of watch time. Big difference. So it's important that you create individual playlists for all the different types of content that you're uploading so that visitors can easily find what it is they're looking for. And lastly is the branding tab. Now I'm gonna cover branding in the next video when I show you how to create channel art. So I'm just gonna skip this section for now. Okay, so the last thing that you're gonna to wanna to do when setting up your channel is take care of a few advanced settings as well as improve the search engine optimization of your channel. So to do that, go over to the menu in the left-hand column and choose Settings, right near the bottom. Now in the Settings menu, there are a few things that you may want to change. And the first is the default currency. Now just to be clear, this is not necessarily the currency that you're going to be paid out in once you're monetized. This is just the currency that your estimated revenue will appear in inside of your analytics panel. Once you're monetized, whatever currency you have your Google AdSense account set to pay out in is what you'll be paid in. That has nothing to do with this setting. This is just for your own accounting purposes. So if you're from another country and you wanna see your earnings in that currency, then change this setting. Now I myself am in Canada, but all of my income streams outside of YouTube pay me in US dollars. So just for the sake of continuity, I keep my currency set to US dollars. But what you set yours to is entirely up to you. Okay, so the next tab down is the channel tab. This is where you can choose your country of residence and more importantly, add in a few keywords to help improve your channel search results on the YouTube platform. So to add in keywords, all you have to do is type in the keyword or phrase and then either hit comma or the enter key on your keyboard. Now this is extremely important. Only put in keywords that pertain to your channel's content. Some people think that padding this section with random keywords from popular niches will somehow improve their search results and those people are wrong. Putting in keywords that have nothing to do with your content is only going to confuse the algorithm to the point where it'll just stop promoting your channel altogether. So if you want to kill your channel right from the very start, putting in keywords that have nothing to do with your content is the best way to go about doing that. Just make sure that every keyword you enter in in some way pertains to your target audience. Okay, moving on. So the next tab over is the advanced settings tab. The first option you'll have in this menu is to either set your channel as made for kids, not made for kids, or something that you want to review every video. 
In a nutshell, if all of your content is going to be made for kids, then choose the first option. If none of your content will be made for kids, then choose the second option. And if your channel content is going to be a mix of both made for kid videos and not made for kid videos, then choose the last option. In here, you'll also be able to link a Google Ads account if you already have one. You can also decide whether or not you want your subscriber count to be displayed on your home page. I don't know why people hide this. Every channel starts out with one subscriber and every channel goes through that growing period. To me, hiding your subscriber count just tells viewers that you don't have very many subscribers and that you're embarrassed by that fact. And it's nothing to be embarrassed about. Every YouTuber goes through that phase. And the last setting you may be interested in turning off is the allow viewers to clip my content. Keeping this turned on will allow viewers to use any of your content in their YouTube shorts. Okay, so we've already covered the feature eligibility, so let's move on. The next tab down is the upload defaults. The upload defaults are presets that you can create to reduce your video upload times. The first is the basic info tab. As far as the title and description go, for now just leave them blank. This is where you would add in content that you would want to be present in all of your video descriptions. Your titles for your videos are always going to be different, so leave that blank. As for the description, there may come a time when you have products or courses to promote or company affiliations that you may want to advertise. And those type of things are something that you would want to include in all of your video descriptions. And just so that you don't have to keep typing those things in over and over, you could just enter them in here one time and they'll automatically show up in your description area when you upload a new video. Now one feature that I think you should always enable is setting the visibility of your new video uploads to private. And the reason you want to do that is because when you upload a video to YouTube, the first thing YouTube does is process the standard definition of your video. Once that's done, if you have your visibility set to public, your video will go live, which means even though you've uploaded a high definition 1080p or 4K video, your first viewers are only going to be able to view your video in 720p or less until YouTube finishes processing the HD version of your video. And depending on the length of your video, that could take anywhere from 2 minutes to 20 minutes. And first impressions are everything. So a good rule of thumb is to upload every one of your videos as private. And then once all of the checks and the HD processing are finished, then change the visibility of the video to public. And you can do that right in the content section of your YouTube studio. Now as for the tags, there are going to be some crossover tags that apply to all of your videos. For the channel I'm creating here, ambient music would be a tag that applies to all of my videos, so I would put that in here. Nature videos might be another one, because all of the videos will feature nature footage. What you don't want to do is put tags in here that don't apply to all of your videos. So if you upload vlog videos as well as tutorial videos, putting both of those tags in here would not be a good idea, because not all of your uploads will be tutorials, nor will they all be vlogs. So you want to leave those type of tags out of this section and just add those tags in on a video by video basis. So once you've made changes here, just click the save button. Okay, so the next tab over is the advanced settings tab. The first option you have is to turn on automatic chapters. Chapters are really useful for longer videos, but I wouldn't recommend using them on anything under 5 minutes. But for longer videos, they serve two purposes. The first is to enable your viewers to jump ahead to the exact part of your video that they want to see. Now you might be thinking that having viewers jump ahead on your videos will shorten your watch time, but that's not necessarily true. When viewers are looking for a specific part of your video, having to scroll through and try to find it can be really annoying. For most viewers, it's annoying enough to cause them to click off the video and not watch it at all. But if you give them the exact timestamp as to where the content they're looking for starts, then they're more likely to stay on your video and watch that entire chapter. Chapters are also a useful tool for better search engine optimization. A video without chapters only has one title when it comes to Google search. But a video with chapters programmed into it actually has as many titles as it has chapters. So although someone who is searching on Google for something may not be searching for the title of your video, they may be searching for the title of one of your chapters, and that chapter title will bring your video up in Google search, and that's why chapters are such a powerful SEO tool. Now I prefer to put my chapters in manually on my channel, and that's just because I've designated points in my videos specifically for chapter breaks. And when you click on automatic chapters, there's no guarantee that YouTube will insert the chapter breaks where you want them to. 
I'll teach you how to create chapters manually in another video. But just know that if you're uploading long tutorial style videos and you're not breaking your videos up into chapters manually, then it's a good idea to let YouTube do it for you. Now for a channel like an ambient music channel, chapters are pointless, so don't use them. I don't think anyone is going to want to jump ahead to a certain point in the song. Okay, so the next option you have is licensing. Standard licensing means that you own the copyrights of all of your content, and that no one else can use it without your permission. Choosing Creative Commons licensing means that you either don't own the copyright to the content in your video, or that you're giving other people the right to use your content in their videos. I leave all of my videos on my YouTube channel set to standard licensing. I wouldn't really worry about the rest of these, unless of course your videos are not recorded in English. Then you may want to set your default to whatever language they're recorded in. As for the comments, I recommend choosing this setting here. YouTube is pretty good at filtering out spam or hateful comments, so this setting has worked for me so far. And finally, there's the setting to show how many viewers like this video. You definitely want this turned on. Likes are the equivalent to positive reviews, and positive reviews will help your videos get more views. Once you have all of this set up, click the save button. Now the next tab down is the permissions tab. This is where you can see who has access to your YouTube channel. So if you want other people working on your channel, this is where you would invite them in. And now the next tab down from that is the community tab. Under the automated filters section, you'll find places where you can add in moderators for your comment section, as well as approved users. This isn't something that you need to worry about when you're just getting started out. This next section can be very useful, and that's the hidden users. You may not know this, but in the comments section of your videos, you, the owner of the channel, have the ability to hide users from your comments section if they're violating your personal comments section policies. So what does this mean? It means that if someone is leaving rude comments or spam, you can choose to hide that user from your comments section. When you do that, their name will show up here. Once you've hidden someone, they can still post in the comments section of your videos, but only they will be able to see their comments that they've posted. Neither you nor any of your viewers will be able to see them, so basically they won't know they've been hidden unless they view your comments section while they're logged out of their YouTube account or if they're viewing your channel from someone else's account. If you ever change your mind and you want someone to be unhidden, all you have to do is just click on the little X next to their name and their post will be visible to the public again. Now the last setting that you may want to enable in here is block links. This prevents people from promoting things in your content section. I keep this turned on for my channel because I found that most people putting links in their comments are trying to either sell something or trying to get your viewers to leave your channel and go somewhere else on the internet. That kills your watch time, which affects your channel's growth as well as how much money you make every month. So that's why I keep this feature turned on. On a side note, if you want to promote your channel to someone else's audience, the best thing you can do is leave a really useful and thoughtful comment on one of their videos. If people like your comment, some of them may click on your username to see who you are. But just blatantly saying, hey, check out my channel, isn't going to get you anything but hidden from that comment section. Okay, so the last two headings are the defaults heading, which is just a repeat of the comment setting, which we already viewed under the upload defaults tab. Now the final tab in the settings menu is the agreements tab. This is only going to be available to you once you've been monetized, and it's just a spot where you can go to review your YouTube partnership agreement. So as far as initial setup goes, that's pretty much it. All we have to do now is upload some channel art, and that I'll cover in depth in my next video. As I said earlier in the video, if you're still undecided about what your channel is going to be about or what type of content you want to offer your viewers, then be sure and watch my video, Six Things You Must Do Before Starting a YouTube Channel. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. As always, if you like this type of content and you want to see more of it, you can let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. As soon as I get the How to Create Channel or video uploaded, you'll be able to find a link to it right here. But until that time, be sure and check out my Getting Started on YouTube playlist for all kinds of tips and ideas on how to kick off your YouTube journey. Until next time, take care.